So today I'm going to be talking about something that I get asked a lot, how to breed corn snakes. So I try to do each step of the process. So I have a coming out of brumation video and then putting them back into the room. I have a pairing video and now what I have to explain to you guys is lay boxes and then when the corn snake lays eggs, what do we do with the eggs? An incubation and everything like that. So that's what we're going to do. Now, after that pre-lay shed is when we're going to put in our lay box. So let's go over what I use for lay boxes as well as egg boxes for when I incubate. What these are, are to-go containers. These are from the restaurant supply store. Here we have an Ace Mart. These are all around the country. If not, just Google a restaurant supply store around you. They're totally worth it for so many reptile type things. This is just a clear to-go container. I wish I remembered what I paid for them exactly, but I think it was somewhere around 20 bucks for about 50 of them which is a pretty good deal, especially if you have a lot of snakes. It's super convenient. Um, I don't know if I've seen anyone else use these, but they work really well. So let me go over real quick how I make them into a lay box as well as an egg box. So first we're going to do the lay box. So what I have is a razor blade. If you have an X-Acto knife, that's better. Um, you're gonna see I'm pretty sloppy with this. Um, if you've seen my other videos, I get kind of sloppy with, uh, I'm not good at this whole like, cutting perfect circles or making things look pretty. I just do things to the point that they work. So that's how I roll as far as these lay boxes go. So I'm going to be careful not to hurt myself. So I've made like 20 of these this year between eggs and lay boxes and um, I haven't cut myself at all but luckily this time you know I gave myself a good cut on my left hand. Yeah it makes sense now that I'm doing the video and everything that this is gonna happen. So don't do what I do but if you could get the same result by using some other method that's safer that's probably a good idea. But anyway, here we have it. We have a hole big enough for the female to get in and lay her eggs. And what we're going to do is put Refti Chip in this lay box. And that will give a good humid substrate for our female to lay eggs. I know some of you are thinking, hey, that hole has sharp edges, all that stuff. Um, this is super flimsy plastic. It's not going to be harmful for the snake. It's not very sharp. You know, snakes have scales for a reason and they can take a lot. So uh, they're perfectly fine with something like this. If I'm, if I'm not cut from it, then the snake definitely won't. Um, I haven't had any issues. So just to clear that up. So I've measured it out a couple times. What I do is mostly about four ounces of water to the container filled with refi chip for the lay boxes. For all those people who like precise measurements, that's about how much water is going into this. But I'm guesstimating. I'm doing it just by sight, just because I've done it so many times, and it's much easier that way. And that's really it. Now you have a lay box that's perfect for your female. Why do you need a humid lay box? You need a humid lay box because. The female will otherwise look for, you know, the most humid, damp, warm place to lay her eggs. And sometimes that ends up being the water bowl if there's not a good humid hide in there. So we want to avoid that. We want to avoid obviously drowning the eggs by putting in a good humid hide. You'll see that she'll hang out in there quite a bit. Um, I even keep it in there after they lay because they just seem to like it. So, and in case they double clutch then we have the lay box in there. So I'll just do that for the rest of the season until probably the summer, uh, probably the end of the summer, I'll just keep a lay box in there because they seem to just hang out in it a lot. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this kind of video, whether it be breeding corn snakes or setting up eggs, and I just wanted to wait for a really great pairing in order to uh, show you the eggs. So what I have here is our Miami Oka tea that went to our fluorescent red Oka tea, which is going to make just some crazy babies. So that's who I decided to wait for. There are, I think like, there's like seven other clutches on the ground and she was one of the latest ones to go. So I had to wait all this time, but here we go.
So there we go guys, a beautiful clutch. Now let's get this girl off of her eggs. Wait, but first let's make a lay box. So this will be exactly the same as the lay box besides one part. I'm gonna take this very dangerous razor blade that may cut your finger and put just a little hole. I just want one hole in this and uh, that will be it for the egg. So we'll keep obviously a lot more humidity than if it had a hole in the top of it. And then we're gonna fill this up with Repti Chip, make it so that it is wet, but not, not dripping wet, but it's definitely wet to the touch. And then uh, that's pretty much it. This is just a delicate kind of twisting process just to get a hole about as big as the point of a pen. That is a perfect size just to keep bugs out, keep you know fruit flies and stuff that fly around to get in from the eggs, but also give a little bit of air exchange um, and not let humidity out. So this is what works for me. Some people do no holes. Some people put two on each side. A lot of people do it differently. Some people will even put saran wrap over the top to kind of keep everything out. But um, I like putting a little hole in the top. That's just me. All right, so now our egg box is ready. As much as I put in the lay box is about what I put in the egg box as well as far as water goes. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but it's definitely wet, but it's not dripping wet. And I will keep an eye on the eggs. I'll check them every couple days. If I see that they start dimpling, I'll put in more moisture. If I see that there's starting to get these things called windows in the eggs or you start seeing moldy spots, stuff like that, I will take down the humidity. So. It's a benefit of not having that many clutches. I can give them individual attention so that if I see one is going south, then I can make the correct adjustments and go for it. Um, if I had a bigger collection, if I had more clutches on the ground, maybe it'd be advantageous to get an exact measurement for the egg box, stuff like that. But for me, I just like to do it by eye and most of the time, 99% of the time, it's perfectly fine. And if there is any issue, then I just add a little water or I change the substrate, that's it. Now for the important stuff. So corn snakes don't typically defend their eggs. So in the wild, they will lay their eggs, stay around them for a little bit, and then they will kind of take off after they know that they're in a good location. So that was relatively easy. Here we have a good clutch here. So that was relatively easy. Here we have a great clutch. Um, I'm gonna count them right now. You wanna check if you have any slugs. So slugs are gonna be infertile eggs. They have a much more rubbery feel to them. They're usually a yellow tone. Um, if you can't tell the difference, you candle them. So what that means is all you do is take the light on your cell phone, put it against the egg, and try to see if the egg has veins, and that's how you can tell if it's a good egg or a bad egg. An infertile egg won't have any veins, a fertile egg will have veins, so that's one way to do it. Once you see enough slugs and enough fertile eggs, you pretty much know off the bat. There's some that kind of go halfway, but for the most part you can tell. Here we have all fertile eggs. All of our females have laid all fertile eggs so far. They've had small clutches, but they've all been fertile, which is great, so that's fine with me. We actually have a worksheet on our website with all that information on there. If you want to see, it has all of our inventory of corn snakes, all of our pairings from this year, all of that good stuff so that we're keeping documentation so that if we ever sell you a snake, if you ever want a snake, you know what we have and then also you know exactly where it came from and all the proper information. So let's see how many eggs we got. So we have two, four, six, Eight, nine. It looks like we have nine fertile eggs. Now I want to make a little depression for them to go into and then kind of fill around them. So the substrate around them will keep humidity up and that's it. They will easily close. So I will mark the egg box with what the mother is because Quite frankly, there's only one mother when the males could have been to multiple females, so I don't want to confuse myself. So I put the females information on there, and then we put them into the incubator. Now, as far as incubation goes, there's a few different ways to go about it. So I find that corn snakes do well anywhere from 78 to like 86 degrees. Uh, when you go too hot, which I've done 86 degrees before, when I was very impatient, it was my first corn snake clutch, 
and I got a lot of tiny small babies. So what happened was the process went a lot faster. They came out in about 50 days and the babies were very small. I did it last year at about 74, 75 degrees and the babies took about 100 days to get out, but the babies were huge and they were ready to go and they fed great and everything. So that was definitely better. This year they're going to be at about 80 degrees, which I think will be that sweet spot. Won't take forever. The babies will be big and healthy. The longer it takes to incubate, the more you have to worry about keeping your temperature constant and all this other stuff. You know, just the more worrying, the more time, the more worrying, the more checking for me. I check them all the time. So um, at, at 80 degrees, we're hoping for about 55 to 60 days. We'll see what happens. Our first clutch should be due in a month or so. All of our adults are at 80 degree temperatures. So all we have to do is take the eggs, put them on the top shelf in the room where the adults are and then leave them. You don't necessarily need an incubator, even if you don't have a room that's slightly warmer. You can put them on top of your racks, you can put them on top of your refrigerator, and they'll probably hatch out. They're super easy going, as long as you keep the humidity right, all that stuff, they'll usually go the distance. I think people sometimes think the eggs are too fragile. I mean, even I do that, but um, they're pretty hardy. So as you can see, I have all my clutches up there. How many clutches do we have? We have three six, seven. So this will be the eighth. We have nine girls going this year. This is the only one, this is the Lava Terrazzo, who hasn't had her pre-lay shed yet, but she does look gravid. Let's get these eggs up here. I'm short, so I have this nice little step stool. So I will show you guys some of the eggs that we've had so far this year and get you kind of updated on what we got. So I just wanted to lay out all the eggs for you guys. So as you can see, corn snake eggs are usually slightly oblong. But I've also had some girls put out ones that are almost perfect circles. So they are a little variant. But as you can see, this is kind of a weird clutch. Um, they're all fine, but there are some spots where you do get what seemed at first as windowing but they're not uh they're not like humid or anything they were laid like this and they are kind of calcified and hard in these spots um i think they'll do just fine but i am keeping an eye on them and uh, if anything spreads then that's where you get the issue but um i have a feeling this is going to stay right where it is and we are going to be totally fine with this clutch and it's going to go all the way and that's really it guys. All I do is put them on this top shelf and it actually stays a little bit warmer up here than it does down there. So it's probably at, you know, 82 degrees instead of 80 degrees, which I think will be perfectly fine. That will do for me. And uh, it just makes my life easier having this top rack. It's, it's somewhere where I wouldn't put any of the snakes because it would be hard to reach and just make my life too hard. But for the eggs, it's good enough to, to put them up there. And I try to forget about them so I don't stress over the eggs because it usually always works out no matter how much you stress. Because once you get decent at putting the correct humidity and stuff in the egg boxes, then incubation is mindless. But um, a lot of times you get impatient and stuff and are always checking on them. So if you can put them somewhere where you almost forget about them, you're mostly going to be better off. Everything will be fine come back in 55 days and uh, we should have some babies. Super important after a female lays a clutch of eggs to give her a good look down. And if you guys don't know how big females have to be to breed, this girl is pretty small but she is about four years old and she is perfectly fine to breed. Uh, corn snakes are very small, especially females. Um, I find my males get a bit larger than my females and um, I've heard otherwise but that's what seems to happen in my collection at least. So we're just looking her over, seeing if she's skinny or anything. This is a pretty normal body size for her. Um, she looks pretty good. She's obviously a little bit atrophied as far as her, her body's a little bit small. She's a little bit skinnier than usual, but um, nothing that's abnormal. And then we also want to check the tail and see, you know, if there's any eggs still left in there. This girl is perfectly fine. Um, you'll you'll be able to tell there'll be a little lump if you have an egg stuck in there or anything like that But luckily this girl passed all of her eggs perfectly fine And we have nine good eggs 
and we're gonna feed her back up. We'll probably feed her within a couple of days and uh, they typically eat right away and I've even had them eat like two days prior to laying and then the day after laying. So they're, they're just super, uh, super hardy as far as eating and they always want to eat and they recover really well from, from breeding and laying and the whole process. And they're just, I just don't know a snake that's more made to have fun as far as breeding goes because they're so easy. I find them easy to breed as long as you get the formula down correctly. They're smaller and then they just react very well to breeding. And you know, you have a lot less issues than you may have with other species in my opinion. So I hope that helps you guys out. Once you get it down and you do it once, corn snake breeding can be super easy and super fun. Um, it's really not anything about getting the newest more for the most expensive more for anything like that. Um, you can have a clutch with a hundred dollar snake and get you know hundreds of possibilities between a pairing and you know core snakes differ than a lot of other snakes because you can get something that's really really cool with a lot of genes in it for a hundred bucks pair with another animal that's also a hundred dollars and get hundreds of possibilities on what the animals could come out like and just have so much fun doing it and then getting them feeding and they're tiny they're easy to work with they're just the best and I'll show you when we start to have ones hash out, I will show you how to set up babies, I'll show you how to feed the babies, I'll show you that whole process because it is, it's super fun and uh, I'm super excited to get this season going. I hope you had a great season or are having a great season or if you plan on breeding in the future or if you're seeing this video in the future, I hope that you have all the success in the world. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want, but you know, if you made it this far, you're certainly on the team.